Nicht wahr? Gut. Und, Till, das klingt absolut gleich, ob Sie hier sitzen, dort, dort, wie das Orchester sitzt, ist dabei irrelevant. Wahnsinn. Können wir anfangen? Klappe! Today, I am lucky, we are all lucky to have with us Till Brunner who is both my parallel and my paradox, because he's a musician, parallel, but he plays another kind of music. And that, if you want, is the paradox, and that's what I would like to talk to him a little about today. You know, I come from Argentina. In Argentina, the, the Argentinian music is the tango. The tango was always part of the musical life. All classical musicians, knew the tango, played tango, danced tango, etc. Jazz in the United States, in the United States, not to speak of Europe, was always something separate. There were 90% of the classical musicians who had nothing to do with jazz and vice versa. And here we have today somebody who has achieved really the highest level of uh, playing the, the trumpet and has dedicated his life to uh, the jazz. Welcome. So great to be here. Thanks for having me. The first difference which I thought of when I was very young, last year, <laughs> was that a lot of jazz is improvised. In other words, you feel some inspiration, some idea that you have, and you invent. We classical musicians are limited to the music that we read. Many years ago, uh, 200 years ago or more, the musicians improvised too. Mozart improvised cadenzas for his piano concertos and so on. And in a way, I'm sorry that the classical world has lost that because there's a wonderful feeling of freedom in improvisation. I suppose this is also something that is what attracts you to jazz. I really agree that the freedom aspect to it is something that probably came to my eye and my ear uh, right away. I was having a classical education uh, at the time and I was ready to go that road in the beginning. And I How old were you? I was uh, nine when I started. And, uh, the trumpet? Uh, yes, I was, was nine. Wow. And, and I, I you had good lungs. Well, I, that's about you know, the, the right age, maybe even a little earlier. Too early is not a good idea, I was told. Um, but I did the recorder for, before, and I come from a, from a musical family, and they do classical stuff until today. You know, I had organ players and church organists, and they were accompanying me, so I had a great time, and I went... Uh, to a school that had a wonderful music teacher that told me, this is going to be your future, you have a nice sound, uh, the sound is something that people will always uh, like and which is some of the most important in in ingredients, but here is the classical repertoire. So I did the Haydn stuff, I did Hummel, I uh, was part participating in, in, in workshops and in, in, in competitions, but somehow... And did you play in orchestras too? I played in orchestras, I started playing in orchestra, it was more uh, a combination, like a youth orchestra, and then it became a, you know, a, a, a symphony orchestra, apart from the school that I went to, and I enjoyed myself, but the moment that one of our bass players in the high school big band that I was a part of played a recording of alto saxophonist Charlie Parker to me, to me changed my whole life. It was almost like my world changed from black and white to color. And I had and a feeling, how old were you? Uh, I was 12 at the time. I will never forget that. It was wow. almost as it, it was yesterday. And do you remember the piece? I, I remember the piece. It was Anthropology. Can you play it? Oh, yeah, absolutely.
and so forth. So lots of notes over a melody that already existed. And I found out within the next few weeks that all of this wonderful melody stuff was based on existing compositions that Charlie Parker just took and wrote new melodies to. And the new melodies were actually the way he was improvising with. And, 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 and so he created new compositions over old compositions. And his way of, of playing felt to me, it was, it was almost like a first erotic experience. I'm going to be very honest with you about this. I felt, people, you, you, you can't do this kind of stuff. You know, this is almost like forbidden music. But I knew immediately it would never let me go. It just caught me overnight. And that was a very important moment to me because I realized uh, that this is going to be my musical life for the future. It's not that I ever decided to quit classical music, but in a way I did. So I told my teacher, I think I found what I like. And from then on, I, I pursued everything uh, that I could. I, I listened to, to uh, Charlie Parker, uh, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, and I was very fortunate to run into a few teachers that, that gave me recordings that were very difficult to, uh, to get your hand on uh, in Germany uh, at the end of the 80s. Maybe I should explain to our viewers that the role of the trumpet in the classical music until the end of the 19th century, practically, is a very specific role in the orchestra. There are not that many solo pieces for trumpet in orchestra, but in the orchestra it plays the harmony, it plays the rhythm, then of course uh, in the 18th century, Berlioz and, of course, Wagner think, wrote more and more um, complex parts for the trumpet, but it remains very much an ensemble instrument in the brass ensemble. The king of the brass ensemble is the trumpet or the horn. But in jazz, it's immediately the great, uh, the great soloist. And uh, it must be great fun to play and invent something and immediately be able to, to, to do that. It is great fun. Of course, this piece of brass comes from the battlefield, at least from the jazz view of it. You know, it was a signal out there you know, to, to really attack or you know, just d disappear. So uh, I think this is as far as the, the trumpet history uh, goes and it, you're absolutely right. It, it was about something that you could hear right away. I was almost uh, intimidated by by the fact that when you play a wrong note in the orchestra, everybody turns around and everybody knows it's it's you. And and that thing makes trumpet players, no matter if they're classical trumpet players or jazz players, immediate friends, immediate friends, because you meet on the basis of your chip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and this is something that, that's remarkable because uh, the reason behind it is that the system of a brass instrument um, is based on everything that you put in there from, from a player. It's the human being that produces the sound. Uh, it's not the hand or the hammer or something in between. It's you. So the, the fact that our lips open and close uh, up to uh, a thousand times in one second is the reason why a note comes out. So whatever doesn't come out the way you like it, you know, is to blame on yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so all the improvisation stuff is, is something that, that I feel is, is based on the harmonic knowledge of what is going on. And I think that even though I wasn't there and around, of course, that even Mozart and Bach, you know, who I was uh, unfortunately not around when he was playing it on the organ, but the improvising Johann Sebastian Bach, in, in my mind, is someone that, that is absolutely aware and capable of, of, uh, of the access to what he does harmonically. And if you're, in, if you're not in doubt about what's happening harmonically, you, you can play almost everything based on, on, on the chord. Mm -hmm. 